Hello guys, welcome to DBS 10012 Engineering Science. For topic number two, it is linear motion. Let's go. So, what is linear motion? So, linear motion refers to any motion that moves along a straight line in one direction. The direction can be either in a horizontal, vertical or inclined direction. Linear motion can be either uniform or non-uniform. We'll, we will be elaborating this uh, linear motion more in future slides. Let's go. Follow me. Uniform linear motion is movement with a velocity that is constant and stable or with constant velocity or zero acceleration. In terms of uh, direction, the object should be running at a constant speed on a straight direction. Mm, I give you two examples. The first one is a cooling fan that, uh, that is running at a fixed speed uh, the second example is a train going along the tracks at steady speed. So those two are examples of uniform linear motion. Non-uniform linear motion is when a body that is moving along a straight line that does not travel equal distances in equal amounts of time. So velocity and or acceleration in non-uniform are changing in unpredictable ways or with variable velocity or non-zero acceleration. I give you three examples here. A racing horse, okay. an automotive braking and throwing a softball. Okay, to further understand linear motion, we have to understand um, the differences and the similarity between distance and displacement. In terms of definition, of distance is the length traveled by the moving object. Whereas for displacement, the definition is a distance in a straight line with specific direction. It can also be defined the distance it moved from its original po original rest position measured in a straight line. For explanation, distance is direction. Um, direction is not a factor when dealing with distance, whereas for displacement, Okay. Displacement addresses the issue of the overall change in position. This is where distance and displacement is quite similar. It's on the unit. Okay. Both distance and displacement use meter as the SI unit. But for the symbol, it is different. Distance use D or X. Where else displacement use S. For a physical quantity, distance uses scalar quantity that have magnitude only. Where else displacement uses vector quantity, which means it uses magnitude and direction. To further give you an understanding of what I talked about earlier, I'll give you an example. So example one, a physics teacher, that is me, walks four meter east, two meters south, four meters west, and finally, two meters north. Okay. As shown in the diagram, okay, even though the physics teacher has walked a total of distant uh, 12 meters, her displacement, which is not me, I should be him, okay? displacement is 0 meters. According to the cost of her motion, 
she has covered 12 meters of ground meaning distance okay 12 meter distance yet when she is finished walking she is not out of place so there is no displacement for her motion she did walk but she actually did not move can you get what i'm saying okay the four meters east is cancelled by the four meters west and the two meters south is cancelled by the two meters north in terms of displacement is zero but in terms of uh, distance it is 12 meter okay 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 one more example so this time around you are given a figure okay you are given a figure and the example states that Kawarizmi takes some rambutans at position A and then he put the rambutans at position B and passing point B and finally stop at point C to take more rambutans okay as the figure shows right so A what is the total distance when Kawarizmi reached position C The answer is, all right, if we were to refer to the figure, the distance from A to B, B to C is 8 plus 6 equals to 14 meters. Okay, distance. B, what is the displacement from its starting point? So you need to calculate the distance from, I think uh, it's not distance, it is displacement from A to C. So from A to C, there is a straight line. So by using theorem Pythagoras, okay, it is 10 meters. Okay, it is already shown in the figure. If uh, you don't have the 10 meters there, you can calculate it by using theorem Pythagoras. And C, if Khawarizmi returns to point A from point C and returns to point A, what is his displacement this is quite a tricky question but by now you should have uh, understand how to differentiate between distance and displacement so for question number C when you return back from C to A meaning that your displacement is zero but your total distance is 8 plus 6 plus 10 Do you get it? I know you can Good job Okay, now next To further understand About linear motion You have to Differentiate between Speed and velocity So the definition is For speed The rate of change of distance while for velocity, the definition is the rate of change of displacement. Okay, distance for speed, displacement for velocity. The formula. The formula for speed is distance over time taken or V equals to D over T. While for velocity, the formula is displacement over time taken or V equals to S over T For symbol, both speed and velocity uses V or U And it is also the same for SI unit For both speed and velocity, they both use M over S Or meter over second While for the physical quantity okay, Speed uses scalar while velocity uses vector these are all the more information on speed and velocity that will enrich your knowledge on speed and velocity read it all right all right I think it is better for us to move into example to further understand uh, 
the difference between speed and velocity. So for example three, a cow walk along a curved path from P to Q, which is 70 meter away from P. So P to Q, 70 meter away from P is, is what? Yes, displacement. And then Q lies to the southwest of P. The distance traveled by the cow is 240 meter. Okay, the distance is 240. And time taken is 160 seconds. So you need to calculate the speed and velocity of the cow moving from P to Q. So what are the difference between speed and velocity? It's just now uh, the formula for speed is formula of speed is guys distance divided by time taken so the speed equals to 240 meters distance right and 160 seconds is time taken equals to 1.5 meter per second and what about velocity what is what is the formula for velocity guys what is it come on please recall yes it is displacement over time taken so velocity equals to 70 meters okay displacement divide by 160 seconds time taken equals to 0.44 meter per second good job the next term or item that you need to understand is acceleration so what is acceleration acceleration is the rate of change of velocity the formula acceleration equals to change of velocity over time taken or a equals to v minus u over t where v is the final velocity u is the initial velocity and t is time taken and the symbol for acceleration is a the si unit is meter over second square and the physical quantity for acceleration is vector to further enrich your knowledge on acceleration please read up Okay, okay, let's look at an example, All right? So given the situation, a car starts moving to a straight road and it finally accelerates uniformly for about 23 seconds until the velocity increased to 25 meter over second. Find the acceleration. So what is the formula for acceleration? Guys, it is V minus U over T, which is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken. So, final velocity is 25 meter over second. Okay, minus initial velocity is zero over time taken is 23 seconds. So you get the answer of 1.09 meter over second square. Do you find the answer correct? Good job. Okay, so uh, linear motion equation, right? In case of acceleration in linear motion is constant, four physical quantities, displacement, velocity, time, and acceleration can be related by using the linear motion equation. That is, okay, equation number one, V equals to U plus A T, and linear motion equation number two, S equals to U T plus one over two 
times a t square. Third equation, s equals to 1 over 2 times in bracket u plus v close bracket times t. And the fourth equation, v square equals to u square plus 2a s. So what are the representation of v, u, a, s and t? So from the equation, the symbol of v is final velocity, u is initial velocity, whereas a is acceleration, t is time taken and s represented by displacement. So okay guys, to further enhance and enrich your knowledge and understanding of this topic, let us watch a few examples. Let's do the exercise of linear motion. In linear motion, we have linear motion equations. First, V equal to U plus AT. Second, V square equal to U square plus 2AS. Third, S equal to UT plus half AT square. And last, S equal to half U plus V multiplied by T. Letter V for final velocity, U for initial velocity, A for acceleration, T for time taken, and S for displacement. Question 1. This question wants you to calculate the velocity and distance of the car. From the data, we have initial velocity equal to 0 meter per second. The verses from rest refer to initial velocity equal to 0. Acceleration equal to 4.0 meter per second square. And time taken equal to 6 seconds. Which formula should we use? Choose the equation 1 because we have the value of u, a and t. Insert the value into equation 1. v equal to 0 plus 4 multiplied by 6. So the answer is 24 meter per second. Question 2. List down the data that is given. U equal to 60 meter per second. V equal to 10 meter per second. And S equal to 100 meters. Part 1 is calculate the acceleration of the car. Select the appropriate formula to find the acceleration and write the formula. V square equal to U square plus 2AS. Change A as subject. Insert the value into the formula. So the answer is negative 17.5 meter per second square. Part 2 asks about the distance will it come to rest. So select the appropriate formula to find the distance and write the formula. V square equal to U square plus 2AS. Change S as subject. Insert the value into the formula. So the answer is 100 meter.
question 3. List down the data. Initial velocity equal to 10 meter per second. Final velocity equal to 0 meter per second. And time taken equal to 0 0.6 seconds. Select the appropriate formula to find the acceleration and write the formula. V equal to U plus AT. Change A as subject. Insert the value into the formula. So the answer is negative 16.67 meter per second square. Part 2. Calculate the distance that athlete can reach in a high jump. Select the appropriate formula to find the distance and write the formula. S equal to half U plus V multiply with T. Insert the value into the formula. So the answer is 3 meters. Displacement time graph is a graph that shows how the displacement of an object varies with time. If we were to refer the figure below, right? For the x, x axis is represented by time, while the y axis is displacement. Okay. For the first line, we name it as A. So A is when the line rises, the object is speeding up, which means a constant velocity. For line, the second line, we name it as B, is when the line is horizontal, the object is stationary and when the object is stationary the velocity is zero the third line we name it as c is the negative sign meaning from uh, from the top going to the bottom okay is negative sign shows that the direction of motion is opposite to the original direction can you understand can you see the graph okay good velocity time graph the motion of an object that is accelerating can be shown with velocity time graph we can refer to the figure below. Okay. Again, x axis represented by time, y axis represented by velocity. So you can see three types of line there. Okay. The first line is uh, we name it as P, is when the line rises, the object is speeding up, meaning constant acceleration. The second line, Q, is when the line is horizontal, the object is constant velocity and the acceleration is zero. While for the third line, we name it as R, is when the line falls, okay, the object is slowing down, meaning constant deceleration. So, you can differentiate between acceleration and deceleration. You understand? Good.
everyone. Today we are going to learn about how to sketch a velocity time graph. Okay, before we start, let us explain the basic info on velocity time graph. First of all, the axis is like this. The velocity is at y axis and the time is at x axis. In a situation, if an object is accelerated, the graph will be like this. If the object is constant, maintain or uniform velocity, the graph will be like this. Lastly, if the object performs deceleration, the graph will be like this. To make us understand more about this velocity time graph sketching, let's do some exercise. Let's go! A car travel on a straight line and increase its velocity from 15 meter per second to 25 meter per second in 6 seconds. At this point, the graph should be like this. The car maintains its velocity for 12 seconds before it stops in 7 seconds. The car maintains its velocity for 12 seconds. The last line will be like this. Before it stops in 7 seconds. So for quick recap, the final sketch should be like this. watching the video and I hope you guys enjoy it and don't forget to read okay bye okay guys by using velocity time graph we can also find the total distance because the distance of the journey from this graph is equal to the total area under the graph what does it mean? So by referring to figure, referring to the figure, okay, uh, x axis is time and y axis is velocity. So to find total distance, we have to find the total area under graph, which is equal to s1 plus s2 plus s3. If you refer to the figure, S1 is under line P, S2 is under line Q, and S3 is under line R. So by calculating the area below the line. Okay. So S1 is area of trapezium, Q is rectangle, maybe square, and R is area of a triangle so by using uh, your previous knowledge on how to calculate area you can find the total distance okay which is p represents constant acceleration q represents constant velocity and r represents constant 
<coughs> deceleration. Okay, guys, I'll, I'll try to explain more on velocity time graph. Okay, by using this graph, you can find um, the total distance by calculating total area under graph. Okay, so if we were to refer the figure given, we have uh, four shapes that we have to find the area and total up together to find the total distance. So we have S1, S2, S3, and S4. So you have to recognize the shapes for you to use the, the formula for each shape to find the area. So for example, S1. What is the shape of S1? Yes, triangle. For S2, yes, rectangle, or it can be a square. For S3, it's yes trapezium and s4 is triangle so when you have calculate each shape you add up s1 s2 s3 and s4 you will have the total distance for the question given Question 4 and question 5 for velocity time graph problems. From graph, an object start from rest and reach its velocity of 30 meter per second in 4 seconds and maintain its velocity in 60 seconds and stop in 5 seconds. Initial velocity equal to 0 meter per second. Final velocity equal to 30 meter per second. And time taken equal to 4 seconds. Use the formula V equal to U plus AT. Change A as subject. A equal to 30 minus 0 divided by 4. So the answer is 7.5 meter per second square. B. Deceleration in the last 5 seconds. List down the data. U equal to 30 meter per second. V equal to 0 meter per second. And time taken equal to 5 seconds. Write the formula. A equal to V minus U over T. Insert the value. 0 minus 30 divided by 5 equal to negative 6 meter per second square. C. Distance at constant velocity. Distance equal to area under graph. So it is equal to area of rectangle. Calculate the area of rectangle. The length is 30 meter and width is 20 minus 4. So the answer is 480 meters. D. Total distance. Total distance equal to total area under graph. Area of triangle plus area of rectangle plus area of triangle. Insert the value from the graph. Half multiply by 30 multiply by 4 plus 480 plus half 
multiply by 30 multiply by 5 so the answer is 615 meters refer to the graph an object start moving with initial velocity of 25 meter per second A. Calculate the final velocity if this ration of the object is 3 meter per second square. Write the formula V equal to U plus A T. Insert the value. Twenty five for initial velocity, three for this ration, and four for time taken. So the answer is thirteen meter per second. B acceleration of a moving object. Write the formula V equal to U plus A T. Change A as subject. Insert the value 25 minus 13 divided by 15 minus 10. The answer is 2.4 meter per second square. C. Distance when object is speeding up. Distance equal to area under graph. So it is equal to area of trapezium. Calculate the area of trapezium. Half multiply by in bracket 13 plus 25 multiply by 5 so the answer is 95 meters D distance at constant velocity distance equal to area under graph it is equal to the area of rectangle. Insert the value. The length is 13 meter per second and width is 10 minus 4 seconds. The answer is 78 meters. The last question is Total time if the total distance for the whole journey is 700 meters. Total distance equal to total area under graph. So, 700 meter equal to area of trapezium plus area of rectangle plus area of trapezium plus area of triangle insert the value half in bracket 13 plus 25 multiply by 4 plus 78 plus 95 meter plus half in bracket T minus 15 multiply by 25 700 equal to 76 plus 78 plus 95 plus 
12.5 in bracket T minus 15. So solve this equation to get the answer. So the answer is 51.08 seconds. Okay guys, to conclude this topic, linear motion, there are two types of question slash solution that you need to know or identify. The first type is by using purely equation while the second type is by using graph where you should find the area under the graph to find the total distance for example but for you to fully understand this topic you should do more exercise uh, do more question on this one and ask your lecturer if you don't understand it okay I think you can do it. I trust you guys. You can do it. <laughs>